I'm going to start off by telling you that for the most part of our assembly today, we're not going to be using the microphone. So it's going to be very important that you are nice and quiet so you can hear everyone speaking, okay? Now, raise your hand if you think you know why we're here. Okay, some of us knows why we're here, that's awesome. Well, we decided to bring you all together because just this past Tuesday, I believe, it was the birthday of a very important man. Anyone know what his name is? What is his name? Yes, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Awesome, and we brought you all together because we want to be able to talk about his great work since our school is named after Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., okay? So throughout this morning, we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna watch a quick video really quick. Then we have a special presentation and then we have some of our very own staff members who want to share how Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is important in their lives. And then we have a special challenge for you all, okay? So we're gonna start off by watching a quick video to find out a little bit more about Dr. King from my friend, Kid President. It's funny to think about because no one knows his name so well, but at one time he was just a kid. Like maybe you're a kid watching this. Well, he was a kid too. Or maybe you're a grown up. That's okay too. Grown up kids are welcome here. I don't discriminate. My local king grew up to be a great man, of course. But that's when all that great in the world when he was growing up. Not everybody was treated like they were somebody. And I believe that you should treat everybody like this is their birthday. But they didn't do that. People looked at the color of your skin. And that's how they decided if they were friends or not. Not cool, man. That didn't make him feel good. That didn't make anybody feel good. But his parents helped him grow up. He went to church. He learned about love. He grew up to be a minister to help a lot of people. He did all sorts of cool stuff. He helped a lot of people learn about love, too. But still, he looked around and said, things should be better. He wanted to change things, so he did stuff. He decided, instead of spreading the hate, he had spread the love. He wanted to bring people together. Where people were hurting, he stepped in to help. He marched with them, he walked with them. He walked on and on with everyone. Sometimes he didn't do well, but he kept going. Sometimes he ended up in prison, but he kept going. Some people didn't like him, but he kept going. Some days were hard, but he kept going. Love does that, and just keeps going, even when things are dark. And, well, I like this part of the story that things did get pretty dark. Someone who didn't agree with him, shot him. He died in April 1968. Now, Kim, 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 why are you telling us this sad story? Come on! I knew I knew it. I'm sorry, but it happened. I don't like that happened. Now, I gotta tell you something. When things are awesome, it can be tough. When things will always be awesome, but your response can be. of continuing to spread the dream. And we're also going to be talking about what dreams we're going to be spreading, okay? So now, I need you all to help me out because we have some visitors in our building today. They are from the Harbor Seacrest Emory Law Firm and they have a special presentation and they came out just for us. So if you can join me in giving them a huge round of applause. I'm from the law firm of Harder, Seacrest, and Emory. Quiet. You can't hear. Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm from the law firm of Harder, Seacrest, and Emory, and I have with me today uh, two of my co-workers. They are also employees of the firm, 
and we are all members of our diversity committee. Do any of you recall entering the essay contest? Well, the reason why we're here is because one of you has won the essay contest for the fourth grade, the entire fourth grade. We received Three classrooms participate from the Rochester City School District, and um, we had 278 entries submitted. Now, the reason why we um, do this contest is because we acknowledge that Dr. Martin Luther King is a very important uh, role model, and um, the topic of our essay contest was, if you could talk to Dr. King today, what would you suggest that we do to help make his message of understanding and appreciating our differences come true? It's pretty wordy, but um, you guys did an excellent job. And actually, this um, presentation is a surprise to the teachers. Um, they um, did not know that their student won. And I'll hold the name after I introduce the teachers. Uh, if Ms. Angelique Nunez and Ms. Arlene Perez. encouragers. <laughs> so uh, first of all, we have a certificate of appreciation for you and your classroom um, to acknowledge your hard work in submitting the essays and being very thoughtful and creative in your submissions. We also have a $200 gift card for you to use for your classroom. You guys are really going to love this one. This is a gift card for a pizza party for your classroom. like to read it or um, that would be really wonderful um, okay the name is Giovanna Title, Never Too Young, and it's a book that we um, put a label in congratulating you, and it's all about young people making a difference. Just like Dr. Martin Luther King made a difference, you too can make a difference. Also, Shavana, you have a $50 gift card. You take Really 
to this essay contest. So give yourself a, a round of applause. Again, congratulations. This was our ninth year of holding this essay contest. You're in the fourth grade now. It's offered to third, fourth, and fifth graders. So see you next year. extremely proud of Gilvana because Gilvana has only been here a year um, from Puerto Rico. English is her second language and she worked very hard um, 
not only at home, but she uh, came up during lunch for about two weeks and we worked on this together. And um, I would just like to say that she definitely exemplifies um, Dr. Martin Luther King uh, Jr.'s uh, dream and what he was all about. So. You all are fabulous. And again, if you can give a huge round of applause to Harder Secrets and Lee Law Firm, thank you all so much for this opportunity. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right. So now is the time when we get off the microphone. It's going to be very important that you are listening closely, okay? Mr. Green, our vice principal, is going to come up and he's going to read a book about Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So we want to make sure you are paying attention. We want to make sure that you are not talking when he's talking because we really want you to get some good information. Come on, give it up for Dr. Uh, Grab the person next to you, grab them by the hand. Hey. Okay, I want you to hold their hand and I want you to tell them this. I say, I want you to say, you can be whatever you want to be. Just keep on dreaming. If you believe that, if you believe that, you will be, you will be successful. successful. Give your friend a hand. Go ahead. Hometown, he saw signs, white only. His mother said these signs were in all southern cities and towns in the United States. Every time Martin read these words, he felt bad until he remembered what his mother told him. You are as good as anyone. In church, Martin sang hymns. He read from the Bible. He listened to his father's preach. These words made him feel good. When I grow up, I'm going to get to use big words too. Martin grew up. He became a minister, just like his father. And he used big words. And he heard as a child, he used big words that he heard as a child from his parents and from the Bible. Everyone can be great. He studied the teachings of Mahatma Gandhi. He learned how the Indian nations won freedom without ever fighting, firing a gun. Martin said, love when others Hate. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. He said, together, when others said, separate. He said, peace, when others said, war. Sooner or later, all the people of the world will have to discover a way to live together. In 1955, on a cold December day in Montgomery, Alabama, Rosa Park was coming home from work. White man told her to get up from her seat on the bus 
so he could sit down. She said, no. And she was arrested. Montgomery's black citizens learned of her arrest. It made them angry. They decided not to ride the bus until they could sit anywhere they wanted. For 381 days, they walked to work, walked to school, and walked to church. They walked in the rain and cold and in blistering heat. Martin walked with them and talked with them and sang with them and prayed with them until the white city leaders had to, had to agree they could sit anywhere they wanted to. <coughs> The history books are written. Someone will say there live black people who had the courage to stand up for their rights. <coughs> the next 10 years, black Americans all over the South protest for equal rights. Martin walked with them and talked with them and sang with them and prayed with them. White ministers told them to stop. Mayors and governors and police chiefs and judges ordered them to stop, but they kept on marching. Wait, for years I have heard the word wait. We have waited more than 340 years for our rights as they march. They were jailed and beaten and murdered but they kept on marching. Some black Americans wanted to fight back with their fists. Martin convinced them not to do that by reminding them of the power of love. Love is the key to the problem of the world. <clears throat> Many white Southerners hated and feared Martin's words. A few threatened to kill him and his family, his house, was bombed. His brother house was bombed, but he refused to stop. Remember, if I'm stopped, this movement would not be stopped because God is the movement. The marches continued. More and more Americans listened to Martin's word. He shared his dream and filled them with hope. I have a dream that one day in Alabama, little black boys and black girls would join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream. After 10 years of protest, the lawmakers in Washington voted to end segregation. The white only signs in the South came down. Martin went wherever people needed him in April 1968. In April 1968. In April 1968. He went to Memphis, Tennessee. He went to help garbage collectors who were on strike. He walked with them. He talked with them. He sang with them. He prayed with them. In April. 1968, in April 1968, on his second day there, he was shot. <laughs> he died. Thank you, Mr. Green. We want you to remember what it is you heard Mr. Green to you, okay? Before I bring my friends up here, 
I think we need to do a little stretch, but we don't just stretch with me. We have to stretch for important. So you're gonna be nice and careful, but I want you to stand up because we're gonna do some repeating. Okay? Just a moment and then we're going to be seated, sitting back down. Here we go. I can change the world with my own two hands. Make a better place with my own two hands. I'm going to try to make a heart, but I have the mic. Make a kinder place. With my own two hands. With my own. With my own two hands. I can make peace on earth. With my own two hands. I can clean up the earth. With my own two hands. I can reach out to you. I can reach out to you with my own two hands. With my own two hands. With my own. With my own. With my own two hands. With my own two hands. I'm gonna make it a brighter place. I'm gonna make it a brighter place. I'm gonna make it a safer place. I'm gonna make it a safer place. I'm gonna help the human race. With my own, with my own two hands, I can hold you with my own two hands. I can comfort you with my own two hands. Use your own, use your own two hands. Two hands. With my own two hands. Beautiful. Give yourself a round of applause and take a seat. All right, and at this time, I want to bring up some of my friends as you all get settled. this table. You can give a round of applause to Mr. Rodriguez. Come on up. Mr. Heron, come on up. Yep, come on, Mrs. Heron. Come on up. You're up. <laughs> Miss Griffin, way in the back. Come on up, Miss Griffin. Mrs. Vera. Mrs. Vera. And last but not least, Mr. Green. We're not going to be using the microphone. And I really want you to be able to hear what my friends have to say. Okay? Not okay. Beautiful. Thank you. So we have a few questions that we want to ask our teachers here, our social workers here, and my friends here, okay? So I want to start off with uh, Mr. Rodriguez. Okay? My question to you is, why is peace important? That is a very, very good question. Peace is very important because we, for an example, we want to be able to sit in this room together without hitting each other, without yelling at each other, and having peace, 
We want to be here. We like that answer. So now I want to go to Miss Vera. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ready? I'm all right. Yeah. Here's my question for Miss Vera. I love this question. Sister to sisters, we love this question. Ready? Yeah. How are Dr. King's views and work? No, nope, that's the wrong question. Here we go. <laughs> How did Dr. King lead the groundwork for women to progress in society? How did Dr. King help women? La pregunta para los que hablan español es que cómo es que a Martin Luther King y el movimiento de derechos civiles ha impactado y ha aumentado los derechos de las mujeres en este país. So I just want to be clear. I know, but we have to do it in Spanish and English, okay? So um, Martin Luther King and the civil rights movement inspired women to organize themselves. We didn't know that we all could organize. El movimiento de Martin Luther King enseñó a las mujeres que nosotras también podemos organizarnos y pensar en nuestros problemas como mujeres. So women start thinking about our own new issues that don't belong to men or don't belong to government, but our own problems. Las mujeres nos organizamos para hablar de nuestros propios problemas. For example, just two things so you, you can see how important. We all have grandparents, right? Yes. We all have grandmothers, right? Yes. So I want you to think of your grandmother, who uh, probably my age, was not allowed to have a credit card of her name. En la época de tus abuelos, o un poquito antes, tu abuela no estaba permitida de tener una tarjeta de crédito al nombre de ella. Y before the civil rights movement, girls were not allowed to have sports in the school as a uh, uh, part of, yeah, right? So I want you to think of all the work that this woman did during the civil rights movement so you can have a credit card, so you can own a house, so you can play sports. Quiero que piensen en todas esas mujeres que lucharon para que ustedes puedan tener derechos de tener una tarjeta de crédito, de tener una casa y de hacer deportes dentro de su escuela. So Martin Luther King and civil rights movement inspired us women to talk about our own. So that's it for me. So women couldn't have, I'm sorry, I stuck on that. Women couldn't have a credit card in their name? Could not. Oh wow. You could not buy a house and yes. you could have custody yes. of your children. Our next question is going to be for Mrs. Hearn. You ready, Mrs. Hearn? Okay. Got to be nice and quiet. How are Dr. King's views and work relevant to us today? How are we still benefiting from his, from his great work? Right. So we often think of Dr. King and his work as being history, something that happened long before I was even born. And it did happen a long time ago, but Dr. King fought for racial equality, so everyone being equal. Dr. King fought for economic justice, so everyone having the same access to work, fair housing. He worked for everyone to have access to freedoms that we take for granted today, voting, being able to go where you want, when you want, being able to drive through a town without being harassed. These are still things that we are fighting for today. Even though we don't frame it as the civil rights movement, we still continue to fight. 
La, la pregunta para Miss Hearn era de cómo es que uh, la ideología de Martin Luther King impacta hoy nuestros derechos y nuestra vida de hoy. Ella dice que el movimiento de los derechos civiles todavía impacta. Ellos lucharon para que haya igualdad en la posibilidad de tener casas, para que todos tengan casas, para que las mujeres y los hombres y todos los blancos y la gente de color tengan la misma posibilidad de ganar el mismo dinero. Y esas son peleas que hasta el día de hoy nosotros tenemos que seguir luchando porque uh, todavía no hay igualdad económica entre las personas de color y las personas blancas o entre las mujeres y los hombres. Entonces, su ideología todavía es presente hasta el día de hoy. So today we still continue to fight for some of these same things, but we now have the women's marches. We now have the Black Lives Matter movement. We continue to fight to end informal segregation, even right here in Rochester, New York. And that is why Dr. King's work is still so important. That's why I keep a picture in my office to remind me I am working to teach every kid I work with to stand up for themselves. Finally, number one rule, Dr. King said, hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. We must be kind. Miss Karen dice que todavía los mismos problemas que se presentaron en, en la época de Dr. Martin Luther King todavía se presentan ahora. Por eso es que seguimos luchando. Por eso es que um, movimientos como la Marcha de Mujeres, que pasa en marzo todos los años, movimientos como uh, Black Lives Matter todavía pasan el día de hoy. Ah, porque seguimos nosotros enseñando a nuestros niños que es importante defender tus derechos con generosidad y de una manera pacífica. Pero tú tienes siempre que darte cuenta que tus derechos sean respetados por otros. Mr. Green, our question for you is, what, uh, what impact has Dr. King had on your own life? Um, well, Martin Luther King has Im impacted my life, um, especially as a young black man in uh, so many ways. Um, the most prevalent um, being my philosophy or the way that I view the world. You know, we all have a certain self-centeredness that we're just born with. You know, we see the world through our own eyes. You know, sometimes we'll say, oh, I, I can understand how you feel by, or I understand your pain. But that's, that's as far as it goes. We can only understand it. We don't know how bad somebody is really feeling. You guys understand what I'm saying? Um, but just viewing what Martin Luther King did in the Selma March, viewing what Martin Luther King did in the Montgomery bus boycott, how he was a willing to allow himself to go to jail because he had a genuine love and compassion for his fellow brother, shapes the way that I view the world. So it sort of busts me out of this box that society puts me in. I can no longer be self-centered. I have to think about you. I have to think about those that don't have what I have. So if you ask me the question of how did Martin Luther King impact my life, he impacted my life by understanding that I have to give back. I have to demonstrate my love. I have to demonstrate my, my compassion. And I have to demonstrate my self-respect and respect for others. I must give back. If we want to change our community, we look up and down the street, drug users, drug pushers, in our very own community, even if we step outside those doors. If we want to change the way that we live, we have to give back. And we give back by modeling those things that Dr. King modeled in the things of his life, the things that he has done during the civil rights movement. Thank you. Ah, uh, el 
mensaje del señor Green es que la única manera es que nosotros podemos realmente seguir con las ideologías de Martin Luther King es que nosotros tenemos que dar de vuelta a nuestra comunidad. No es solamente todo lo que yo recibo, lo que yo pienso, el dinero o las ideas que yo tengo son para mi beneficio. Tengo que pensar cuál es el beneficio para mi comunidad. Y esa es una de las grandes filosofías y pensamientos del señor Martin Luther King. Thank you, Mr. Green. And last but not least, we have one final question because then we have a question for you all. Hey, what? Yeah, we do. Miss Griffin, what does it mean to spread the dream? Earlier in our video, Kid President was talking about how we had to spread the dream. The name of our assembly today is Spreading the Dream. But what does that mean? Okay, Dr. Martin Luther King not only wanted to end racial inequality and stop segregation, one of the main things that he stands for is unity, for us to be unified as a people. That means that you don't have separate pockets of group of friends. That means that you're looking past the physical characteristics of a person and you're looking deep within them to look at them internally, okay? Looking at the content of their character. And you can do that by being a leader amongst yourselves, by loving one another, and looking at each other like we're a big family. Essentially, that's what he wanted us to do, is to be brothers and sisters, and to love one another, and to be unified as a family. We can do these things by moving forward, by looking at each other, by loving each other, being patient with one another, being respectful of one another, this is how we can spread the dream. que nosotros no veamos a nosotros mismos más allá del color de nuestra piel o de la manera de que hablamos. Yo no digo eso. De la manera de que hablamos. Nosotros tenemos que querernos porque nos gusta la persona a nuestro lado, porque veamos el carácter que ella tiene, no por el color de piel que ella tiene. Tus amigos no tienen que ser del mismo color que tú. Tus amigos pueden ser de muchos colores, como, como ella dice, que la unidad lo que importa. La familia fue el mayor mensaje del señor Martin. Here. They have a question for you all, okay? And you are going to turn and talk, and you're going to think about the answer to this question, and then they're each going to call one of you up, and we're going to ask you to talk on the microphone to give us our answer, okay? You ready for the question? Our question is, think of one thing you can do differently because of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., okay? We want you to turn and talk. Turn and talk to the person sitting next to you. Turn and talk to the person sitting next to you first. Para el español, piensa en una cosa que puedes hacer de manera diferente debido a Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. We're gonna give you one minute, okay?
I love this turn to top pair. Awesome. Thank you all so much. You should go back to your seats. Thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. All righty. Think of one thing you can do differently because of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. One thing that I can do differently because of Martin Luther King Jr. is stop all the violence. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, and great job. Okay, here we go. Think of one thing you can do differently. because of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Spread kindness to everyone. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Good job. Great job. Awesome. You ready? You snuck up behind me. Think of one thing you can do differently. Stop all violence and gun shooting. He said, stop all the violence and the shooting. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Awesome. So I know so many people want to share. We're going to finish up and then we'll walk around to hear what your answers are, okay? Because we've come to the end, okay? So, we have the I Have a Dream speech.
Beach Challenge. And let me tell, share with you what it's going to be about, okay? Each one of your classrooms, well, first of all, the I Have a Dream speech is a legendary speech that was recited by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. It's super duper long, it's powerful, and it's very important. And so what we're going to challenge ourselves as a school is we're going to see how much of this poem we can recite, okay? How this is going to work is later on this afternoon, each one of your teachers is going to be assigned a small quote in the I Have a Dream speech. Might be a sentence or two. And we're going to ask you all in your classroom to memorize that quote, okay? Because at our Black History Celebration Assembly in February, which is about three to four weeks away, uh oh, I'm so excited about this, but we gotta wait until we're quiet. Thank you. At our Black History Celebration, we are going to create a video of our entire school reciting the I Have a Dream speech, okay? So what's going to happen within the next three weeks, Mr. Hill is going to be coming around to your classrooms, and he's just going to film your class saying the quote. When he comes in, you all would stand up or sit, whichever you choose, and you would just say your lines out loud. So this is gonna be a challenge because every single class is going to receive a part of the speech. So in order for us to get the full speech out, each one of us has to participate. Do you all think we can do this? Yeah! We gotta be louder. Do you all think we can do this? You should receive your quote later on uh, this afternoon. Bilingual classrooms will have their quote written in Spanish. Before we send you out, I need you to quiet down, because we're, we're about finished. We hope that you remember everything we talked about today. We hope that when you are at home on Monday, you're not just in your pajamas because you are snowed into your house, but it's also giving respect and honor to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So, on our way out, can we shout happy birthday? Can we do that? We are all